Don't be dumb. Getting back on top of your work isn't hard. You just have to be smart about the exact way that you do it. So here's a five minute summary of how I, after years of falling behind and screwing up, I now speed up the process and catch up as fast as possible. Number one, don't catch up. Forget about all the content that you've fallen behind on. That's the first step. The core reason for why you need to catch up in the first place is because the current way that you're going about and tackling your work isn't working. And the only way to fix that is to figure out your system for managing your current workload. This means that you need to figure out a system for how you can easily and regularly go through all the information in each and every lecture of the week. The problem is you can't prioritize catching up right now because you're continuously getting new content. And if you don't stay on top of that content, then you'll never actually truly catch up. You'll end up in this perpetual cycle where you catch up once and a few weeks later you fall behind again and then you try it again and you fall behind again and you'll never actually end up getting to the core reason. Only once you figure out a way to stay on top of the current work consistently should you then carve out time and catch up. Intermittently do the old lecture whilst you still keep up with your current work. That is the best way to go about this. Last week was my first week of balancing placement and studying with work. Plus I posted this massive step-by-step -step study guide which took a ton of time. So naturally, I fell behind on the work. But this week, focusing on improving my study system and logically getting through the content I have in the week, I surprisingly not only finished the work of this week but also caught up on 80% of last week's work. The problem is most people plan their work by tasks. They go like, yeah, I have to do this lecture, PowerPoint number three, this assignment, and it all has to be done today. Which is the dumbest thing you can do because we consistently underestimate the amount of time it takes for us to complete a task. So instead of planning by tasks, plan by hours. That means that the practical method you should use to figure out your system to consistently stay on top of your work is by one, figure out how many hours your lectures or topics will take to go through in the week. And don't tell me, oh, it'll be different every week. I don't know. No, give me the average typical week. Let's say you have 15 lectures or topics and each one of them takes an hour and a half, which it definitely should not if you learn to efficiently study you can definitely reduce that. 15 lectures times 1.5 hours is around 22 hours of going through the information that you have to do for the week. Second, we divide that by seven days of the week, which is around three hours per day. Now you know that you have three hours to do every day to stay on top of the current work. You can 100% reduce all of this by studying efficiently, but for now, three hours. And third, you figure out a specific three hours in the day, a set study block of time where you get through all of your schoolwork. For me, I do this by having default study blocks in my day. If you're in school, you have a set timetable so it's more predictable, so it's a bit easier. But even in med school, with placement, with jobs, I usually, around five to six days of the week, have my late afternoons or evenings free. So there's a default three to four hours that's there for one, studying, or two, YouTube. If I work during the free hours of my day, then boom, I have less to do when I get home. But 90% of the days, at least some form of work that you currently have on top of you, the lectures that you have to do of the day or for the next day, should be getting done in that set study block. Listen, my point is the priority should be to pre-read on tomorrow's lectures or to catch up on today's lectures. It should be staying on top of the current workload that you have. Obviously, make tweaks and plan your life with a good calendar and a good system. Quick video about that right here. But fix your system to consistently stay on top of your current work. Step two, layer the work. Once your system to stay on top of your work is in place, now is when you learn to catch up as efficiently as possible. When you do set aside time for you to work on the lectures that you haven't done, don't just start from lecture one, spend four hours on it. Lecture two, spend another two and a half hours on it. Lecture three, another three hours. Because if you do it like that, you will scrutinize on every single single small detail in every lecture and try to understand it as much as possible. And the thing is, it's this natural thing of, oh, if I don't finish what I'm doing right now and completely 100% memorize it in my head, then I'll never come back to it and I'll have to move on and I won't know it. So instead of spending ages on each topic, why not focus on the high yield information? The 60% of information from all the lectures that will give you the best overview and help you generally understand all the main concepts. Not even 80%, screw the 80-20 rule. The 60%, the overview. Because even if you're, let's say, 10 hours behind the work, this 60% percent of information you can easily catch up on and do in four hours which by the way if you think about it is a lot more easy to fit into your busy schedule of the week and the reason we want to focus on the 60 percent the four hours of work is because the details in powerpoint 3 slide 8 are less likely to come up on the exams a lot less likely actually than the main concepts that will at least allow you to give each and every question in the exam a good go another important benefit to this strategy is that even if you don't get through all the details if you only end up doing the general concepts and the overviews of each powerpoint That'll be enough to help you build that foundation for the next week's worth of learning as well. And then once you understand the 60% of the high yield content from each lectures, that is when you can go a step
step deeper. You can study that next layer of information and take in the actual details. At this point, you're not only staying on top of the current work, but you already have a good overview understanding. So taking in the harder information isn't hard anymore. It's the simple concept of layering. Start with skimming through the entire thing, then take in the 60% of the high yield things from each lecture, and then gradually start taking in the harder details. Step three, make recall questions quickly and don't stop testing. And by the way, just because you're catching up doesn't mean you can skip out on testing yourself. You need to be testing yourself regardless of the backlog that you have. You do it with the current work that you're doing, you do it with the work that you're catching up on because yes, initially the first few times you do it, it will take a little time to get used to, to make questions instead of the notes while you go through the information, but you'll get good at it quickly. And if you're doing it slow, then you're doing it wrong. The studying process is logical, but it's also fluid. You read through the information related with your broader picture, understand why it's important, and every few sentences you make one or two questions on what you've just read. Each question is like eight to 10 words. It's not hard to type them out. I know it takes time to think about the questions, but my biggest suggestion is for you to stop caring about the quality of the questions when you're going through the information the first time. You can start to create them as soon as you start running through those general concepts. And you can do it very quickly if you don't care and think about them too much. Because the reason is when I come back to them to test myself, I've already gone through the content. So I know which ones are useful, which ones are useless. So I quickly edit them. I change them up. It's a process, you know? Because at that point, the thing is the information will be better consolidated and you'll have a better better overall picture of the topics that you're doing. But the point isn't just to stop taking notes or just make the questions. It's to allow you to test yourself as much as possible, regardless of the situation. If you have no proper source of practice questions or practice papers, then making these questions is your primary source for your revision. Doesn't matter how behind you are or what stage of the revision you're at, testing yourself is the only way that you will retain the information that you understand. Anyways, to start organizing your current work and plan the catch up as well as possible, check this video out. All it involves is the two simple steps I take per day to organize and keep on top of everything that I do in my life. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a like, spam the comments, and I will see you in the next one.